All right, guys, so today I want to teach you about the basics of fasting. <clears throat> and for those people who uh, uh, think fasting is some hippie BS or that is dangerous, it is not at all. In fact, fasting has been around for thousands of years. The Greeks did it, monks did it, they did it in Asia as well, they did it in India. So wise men did it all over the place for spiritual enlightenment and also they found it helped them to think better. In fact, fasting is older than the English language because breakfast, first meal of the day, is literally two words, break fast. Okay, it means that you have eaten again after the fast period from your last meal the night before. And fasting basically means a period of time where you haven't eaten food since the last meal. Now, if you are going to fast, there are, well, Let's talk about the benefits of fasting first of all. Number one, a lot of people are eating too much so they're get, gaining weight. So fasting is a way to reverse that because you're literally not eating anything at all. So you have to burn your body fat reserves. Okay, so it's an extreme form of caloric deficit, but it is not starvation, all right? It is literally controlled starvation is what fasting is. Just like exercise is a controlled form of stressing your body out to strengthen it. And uh, another reason why you want to do fasting is to regain insulin sensitivity. Now, a lot of people are getting sick as they're gaining weight because their body becomes resistant to their own insulin as a, pr a product of repeated sugar spikes from them eating a ton of carbohydrates or sugar throughout the day. So they're no longer resistant, uh, they're no longer sensitive to their own insulin, which means then um, they uh, might experience a lot more inflammation of the body. And uh, when they want to lose weight, their body is still producing insulin because the body is not reducing the blood sugar in their blood. So they find it very hard to lose weight because insulin blocks the burning of body fat, all right? So, uh, Increasing insulin sensitivity through fasting is very beneficial to people who might already be sick because they're overweight. And then the last reason, obviously, <clears throat> is to just uh, lose weight in general and keep better aesthetics. Now, bodybuilders generally don't um, go do fasting, right? They think it burns a ton of muscle so bodybuilders try to do caloric deficit while lifting heavy weights and eating a lot of protein to try and retain as much of the muscle as possible. Uh, but I uh, did an experiment a couple of weeks ago where I fasted and after 45 hours, my human growth hormone, which is uh, responsible for triggering tissue growth in children and also for tissue repair in adults, that shot up 1,700% as a result of me fasting. And that has an effect in trying to hold on to more muscle. Um, so I'm actually doing another experiment where I'm going to do fasting to uh, help me lose weight. So my caloric deficit is purely from fasting. And uh, on my exercise days, I'm just gonna eat a small caloric surplus to make sure my muscles get enough protein and calories in total but on my rest days, I won't eat anything. So anyway, in terms of fasting, you want to, uh, first of all, start off with intermittent fasting. So uh, that is basically the time between your last meal and when you eat again. <clears throat> so if you finish dinner at 7 p.m. and you eat breakfast again at 7 a.m., then you have fasted for 12 hours. Now, unfortunately, ketosis, which is the burning of body fat, pretty much starts at 12 hours, okay? Uh, so a lot of people, they're literally, their body is just about to start burning body fat and they start eating again. So then they are, are then using the fuel from the food again uh, and also from their glycogen, which is the, uh, the carbohydrates stored in their muscles, but not from the fat, their body fat itself. And then, uh, so you want to move that time back where you eat your breakfast. Okay, so my good time might be at 14 hours, right? So a lot of people start experience, experiencing hunger 
uh, by not eating at four, for 14 hours. So if they ate, finished dinner at 7 p.m. and they're eating breakfast at 9 a.m., I'm sure they'll feel hunger, right? But, so it's psychologically challenging, not physically dangerous or challenging in any way, but, uh, you know, you're gonna experience hunger. So it is a mental test. And at 14 hours, eat again, so 9 a.m., and then maybe push back by 15 minutes every day until you get to 16 or 18 hours before you eat. So that would be 11 a.m. if you finish dinner at 7 or, or 1 p.m. even. <clears throat> so you want to build up uh, your ability to fast through intermittent fasting, which a lot of people do anyway, just long term. All right, They just uh, don't eat uh, for long periods of time and eat in a small window and they find it helps them to lose weight. Although uh, a lot of the mechanism, uh, the, a lot of the reason behind that is because by restricting how much time they eat, they're naturally eating fewer calories. But prolonged fasting is a different way of fasting and it has its own benefits, right? So as I mentioned, my human growth hormones went up after not eating for about two days. And if you don't eat for long periods of time and your gro human growth hormones shoot up, you can actually fix small injuries uh, over time and I say the optimal is just after three days you want to eat again before the four day uh, time frame in my opinion because then you will start to get a lot more muscle loss all right so I've tested this out multiple times where I've had small injuries and by not eating for more than three days just before the four day mark I started fixing my small injuries through higher hum human growth hormones which some bodybuilders and uh, MMA fighters or boxers or whatever, they will probably inject uh, just to fix their injuries. And then uh, another benefit of fasting prolonged is that uh, you will uh, reduce the chances of you getting full-blown cancer, all right? Because after three days of not eating, your immune system will scale out your cancer cells Plus, by not eating, you're pretty much depriving your cells of food. Now, your body will recycle uh, protein to feed its exist existing cells, but it will deprive the cancer cells of food. And so you try to kill off your cancer cells that way because you're not feeding your cancer cells and you're trying to retain as many of your healthy cells as possible, which is literally what chemotherapy it is, right? You're kind of killing off a ton of cells, including healthy cells, but you're killing the cancer cells, right? But when you're fasting, you're trying to kill off the cancer cells and retain as, much, as many of the healthy cells as possible, okay? But if you wanna do fasting safely, first of all, you wanna do a period of intermittent fasting to let your body become fat adapted, okay? So basically, your body is used to burning glucose purely for fuel, and uh, if you eat a lot of carbohydrates all the time, so you want it to, uh, it's kind of like an induction phase where uh, your body uh, will change its mitochondria, right? Mitochondria are the power engines inside the cells. And if they're only used to burning glucose, you will feel discomfort when you no longer eat glucose. So a lot of people, they'll feel like almost like uh, they're addicted to carbohydrates. When they quit the carbohydrates, they will uh, feel uncomfortable. And uh, you want to change the mitochondria to being able to burn ketones, which is produced when you burn body fat. Uh, and also, you want to ch slowly change your gut microbes to being more adapted to uh, burning, uh, uh, you know, eating other types of foods like proteins and fats, and not just relying on carbohydrates. Um, so uh, eating a ketogenic diet will also help you in terms of how fat adapted you are and being able to do prolonged fast easier. And when you do a prolonged fast, you definitely want to take uh, non-powdered, uh, non-carbohydrate powdered uh, electrolytes, which you can add to the water because you're no longer getting any food input. Uh, you still want to drink water, right? So it's not a dry fast, which is without water. You want to drink water, but if you keep drinking water by itself, you're going to die. You know, you're going to be losing uh, electrolytes. So uh, you want to keep your electrolytes replenished to. Um, have less side effects. And then you can drink black coffee and you can drink green tea. In fact, green tea will speed up the rate at which your body goes into ketosis where it starts burning body fat. 
and uh, light exercise will help. So I've got this thing strapped to me. Today I'm not eating any food, but I'm doing light exercise. You can do walking, which is totally aerobic and will speed up, speed up the rate at which you start burning your body fat. And it will also speed up uh, the rate in which your body goes into autophagy, where it starts recycling cells for this um, health effect in terms of you know, boosting human growth hormone and killing off cancer cells. So, because you know, you're, you're speeding up the rate at which you're burning up your glycogen and starting to burn your fat. So walking is a good way because it's totally aerobic, all right? Once you burn up all your glycogen, you do not want to do things like sprinting or weight training, which will then burn your muscle, which is why the bodybuilders probably think that you know, fasting will burn muscle. Because if you are doing heavy stuff, then uh, you're no longer uh, going, to, your body's not only using, you're using the aerobic system to provide fuel for itself. And if you use anaerobic uh, system to burn fuel, then you will, um, which is anaerobic means no oxygen, then you will start burning up muscle. So we want to uh, stick to burning body fat. So keep the stuff as aerobic as possible. So I am uh, doing a lot of walking during my fasting periods and I do these things uh, called sled pulls on my rest days, which are good for the knees, good doing it backwards. Um, so uh, if you have knee problems, maybe you want to learn this exercise from, from this video as well. So those are the basics of fasting. And also, one last thing, when you break the fast, you want to um, eat a meal with high protein and fats and not carbohydrates because the carbohydrates will suck the potassium out of your cells, which is why a lot of uh, uh, people who were in P uh, POWs or people in concentration camps in World War II died when the Allies freed them from captivity and they ate a lot of food all of a sudden. So you don't want to eat, you don't want to stuff yourself. I mean, a three or four day fast is not going to put your body in danger. Those people probably didn't eat for like a month or had very little food for a month and suddenly ate a ton of food. But to ensure that you do not feel discomfort, you want to eat maybe a few eggs and some cheese when you finish fasting, okay? And not a ton of uh, carbs. So uh, I'm gonna start doing some light exercise to burn off more calories, but without uh, triggering muscle loss, all right? So these are the sled pulls. All right guys, so if uh, you feel comfortable about the knowledge here, then um, try out intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Do me a favor, subscribe to this channel so I can uh, give you more information about healthy living as I try to grow this channel. Oh yeah, one last thing, which I forgot to mention. You cannot cheat when you do fasting, all right? You cannot say, if you are hungry, oh, I'm just gonna have this tiny little bit of bread or you know, a little bit of chocolate or something like that, or eat any protein even, because as soon as you get an insulin response, then your fast is over, okay? So you want to have zero insulin response, which is why I say you can only do black coffee or green tea, stuff like that. If you do want to get some nutrients, some fuel, then you can put what is called MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides in your coffee, uh, which is uh, very popular a few years ago when people were doing um, bulletproof coffee. Okay, so Google MCT oil. You can put that in coffee, your coffee for some extra flavor as well. Sometimes I do that, but you cannot cheat, all right? If you get really hungry, then it's a mental challenge and you can drink some water to try and lower the uh, feeling of hunger. But if, as soon as you put any food in your mouth, you kind of screwed up the experiment and screwed up your fast, all right? So uh, it is difficult mentally, but uh, I definitely encourage you to try some fasting.